octane and isooctane are structural isomers with the molecular formula C8H18. The displayed formulas and the boiling points are shown in figure two. So we know structural isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula. So in this case, both of these two structures are C8H18, but they have um, a different structural formula. So their structure and their name will be different. So we have been asked to give the IUPAC name for isooctane. So we need to find the longest carbon chain that contains the functional group. In this case, it's an alkane. So we haven't got a functional group. We need to find the longest carbon chain. We're going to count down the chain. So we, if we start here, we go one, two, three, four, five. If we were to start here, one, two, three, four, five would be the same. Or down here, one, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. There's no more than five in any one of these chains. So we're going to go straight across the middle, one, two, three, four, five. Now, because it's a five chain, we know that the stem is going to be pent at the end of the name. And we know that this is an alkane because all the carbon carbon bonds are single and there is no other functional group. So this is going to end pentane. Then we need to look at what we haven't named already. So we've named the longest carbon chain from one to five, but this group here is not um, in that name, or this, or this. All three of these groups need to now be added to the name. They're all the same. They're all methyl groups, one carbon chains. So they're all methyl groups, and we need to give their location. So the first two of them are on the number two. So we've got two, and then we've got another one attached to the number two. And we have a third one attached to the number four. And there's three of them. So try methyl. So it's our name. 224 try methyl pentane. Now had we numbered from the other side, then the numbers would have been 244. And those numbers are bigger. So we take the smallest numbers possible. 224 try methyl pentane. Now we're being asked, octane and isooctane can be separated in the laboratory. Name a laboratory technique that could be used to separate isooctane from a mixture of octane and isooctane. So we're separating two substances that are both liquids. Their boiling points are above room temperature. These are both liquids and they have different boiling points. So we're trying to separate two substances that are liquids that have different boiling points. And so the technique that we would use is called distillation. Now you could say fractional distillation, but do be careful if you say fractional distillation that you don't start describing industrial fractional distillation like that for crude oil, because we're describing a laboratory technique here and not um, an industrial technique. So how would distillation work? Well, distillation works on the principle that two liquids that have different boiling points will boil at different temperatures and therefore one will boil before the other and we'll pass into the condenser. So remember that we've got set up our distillation with a flask, and then we've got a condenser coming down the side. We can imagine we would have a thermometer here and we'd seal this up and the condenser jacket would be around the condenser here. So we've got this mixture and as it boils, one of the liquids is gonna boil first, Gas is going to rise into the condenser and, and then it's going to be cooled down and it's going to drop out at the other end and condense out. So whichever one has the lower boiling point will pass up into the condenser first and be condensed out of the mixture. So we'll just get rid of that diagram and we can write down our answer. So we look back up, find out who boils first. So isooctane is going to boil first. So isooctane has a lower boiling point so we'll boil first and pass into the condenser. And then it's going to be condensed in, back into a liquid. 
and collected. And as a result, it's going to be separated from the octane. Okay. Iso octane is added to petrol to increase its octane rating. Write an equation for the complete. So in an excess oxygen, combustion of isooctane, we can use the molecular formula in our equation. So we've got C8H18, and combustion is the reaction with oxygen. Complete is in an excess of oxygen, so that we have more than enough oxygen to complete combustion. And as a result, we're going to get carbon dioxide and water. So when we're balancing an equation like this, we balance the carbons, then the hydrogens, and then finally the oxygens. So eight Cs in octane, means eight CO2s, 18 hydrogens means nine waters. Now we can add up the oxygens on the right, eight twos in carbon dioxide is 16 in the carbon dioxide and nine in the water, that's 25. Now 25 oxygens, how many O2s? Well, we need to half 25, so half of 25 is 12 and a half, and we have written our equation. It says, explain in general terms how a catalyst works. So in general terms, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that is not going to affect the enthalpy change of our action, but it's going to provide us with a route that's slightly different with a lower activation energy. So remember the activation energy, the amount of energy required to break the bonds. We're going to provide an alternate route for the reaction. So we're going to provide an alternative reaction route which has a lower activation energy. Carbon monoxide is produced when incomplete combustion takes place in engines and nitrogen monoxide is another pollutant. Write an equation to show how these react together in the catalytic converter. So carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide, when they react together, they combine to form two slightly less polluting gases. So we're going to get carbon dioxide and nitrogen. We have to remember that bit of knowledge. Now we need to balance our equation. Because we've got N2, we're going to need two NOs. Now that gives us an odd number of oxygens on the left and oxygen is coming in twos in the carbon dioxide on the right. So we need an even number. So I'm going to double up the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide in order to make them be the same number of carbons and oxygens on each side. Platinum, palladium and rhodium are metals used inside a catalytic converter a very thin layer of metals is used on a honeycomb support. Explain why it's a thin layer used in this way. So first of all, why would we use a very thin layer? Well, these metals are all very expensive, so we want to reduce the amount. Now, at A-level, you can't just say to make things cheaper. You need to explain why we would want to do that. Um, so what we would be doing in order to do that, we're going to use a very thin layer to reduce the amount of metal needed not just to say to reduce the cost, to reduce the amount of metal needed. And then why a honeycomb support? Well, we're using some sort of ceramic and then in a, in a very intricate shape and then we're applying a very thin layer of metal across that shape. Why would we use this honeycomb shape? Well, the honeycomb provides a large surface area. Okay, so the honeycomb provides large surface area for reactions to occur on. And then the final part of this question, it says a laic acid is a straight chain fatty acid obtained from plants. Isooctane can be made from a laic acid. The skeletal formula is shown below. Identify a reagent that could be used in a chemical test to show that it's unsaturated. So unsaturated 
is where we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So we're looking for proving this part. We're not trying to prove it's a carboxylic acid. That would be a different test. What would we use to test to see if something contained a carbon-carbon double bond? We would use bromine water or aqueous bromine. I'm going to write bromine water. If I was going to write Br2, the formula, I would put Aq at the side of it to show that it was the solution of bromine water. And what would we see? Well, we'd see that that solution went from orange to colourless, or quite often we refer to it as it would be decolorized. So it had colour and now it doesn't.